Breath of the Wild has been out for so many years at this point, but there are still so many more advanced secrets about this game that have yet to go widely shared. Celebrating the new year, I thought I would share 21 of my most helpful and hidden secrets I have uncovered in this amazing game that can help both new and seasoned players alike. All of these tips are a lot more unique and aren't ones that can be found in other major Breath of the Wild tip videos to avoid rehashing info, so I'm sure you'll all learn quite a bit. So with everything said, Number 1. Although the spin attack is a really great move for attacking wide groups of enemies and knocking them back, the lengthy charge time can make it impractical in most cases. However, if you quickly rotate the left analog stick and press attack with a normal sword, you'll instantly pull off what's called a quick spin, which can be used repetitively to stagger large groups of enemies so you always have the upper edge in combat. Just keep in mind it can be a little touchy to pull off, and it may require a few rapid analog spins to work. Another useful hidden move can be found within this game's shield surfing mechanic, where pressing and holding the R button will allow you to perform a quick turning drift, which can let you move around tight spaces like down small mountain paths with ease. If you do plan on surfing a lot though, I do recommend the Ancient Shield that can be purchased from the Yakala Tech Lab, as not only does it last 5 times longer while surfing than most other shields in the game, it boasts a friction rate that is 10 times less than other shields, which makes surfing on rocky or other friction heavy surfaces abnormally speedy. Next, for those of you worried about weapon durability consumption, the Master Sword is a great tool to use, as whenever it's powered up, you can shoot 20 damage point beams from it using the throw button at no cost in durability whatsoever, assuming your hearts are full. This is super helpful for taking down weak enemies, shooting faraway objects, or even to mine ore without risking durability loss. Without this sword though, there are still many things you can use your weapons against in this game without wasting a single point of durability, such as hitting any sort of switch, striking small objects such as wood to get fire, or my personal favorites, attacking a Lionel while on the back, as none of these things will chew up any of your weapon's precious durability. If you want a more precise way of checking how much durability your weapon has left though, by looking at your weapon inventory, any weapon that has a glowing shine blinking on it is at max durability, any weapon that is red has currently 3 points or less, and everything else is somewhere in between the two. But here's to hoping the sequel has a much better system of checking durability. Another really cool detail I like about weapons in this game is that most weapons, when found on the ground, will have a shining mark on it to help them stand out. But if the weapon has a modifier on it, such as durability up or anything else, it'll also have a bigger, more colorful glowing mark blinking besides them. It's a nice little secret indicator to tell the player if the weapon is augmented from its base. Speaking of modifiers, it's unfortunate that some of them aren't really worth it at all. And yes, I'm looking at you, long throw. But if you have a save right before you obtain a modified weapon, you can reload it to have that modifier completely reload for a chance at a better one. This works for all chest loot and even enemy weapons, so if you really wanted a better modifier for anything you get, then technically you really could. The best application for this is to farm out the super powerful and rare 5 shot bow from Lionels, but killing them over and over to get this can be kind of a waste of time. However, if you load into a Lionel battle and have them take their bow out and shoot you from the start, you can see if he's using either a 3 or 5 shot bow just by looking at the amount of arrows he's firing. So this can be exploited by save loading till he has a 5 shot, then kill him for the best possible results. This next tip is one I'd like to use a lot for show, which is the ability to twirl a spear while on horseback or the master cycle. This looks super awesome by itself and can be pulled off simply by holding the attack button, but unfortunately doesn't actually do any damage like you see here unless you activate the constant weapon hitbox exploit. This can be done by attacking with Y, then pressing X mid-attack, which is a weird step you have to do to make this work, but ultimately worth it considering it has insane effectiveness in battle. If you want to learn another creative, albeit simpler hidden weapon move, the elemental rods have some that make them a bit more effective than you originally thought. Instead of just slashing them like normal to disperse an effect, you can actually use the R button to angle your shot wherever you want, which makes these weapons far more versatile. These weapons can also be charged and released to distribute way more of the elemental effect all around for no extra penalty in durability. Although these tips are good for all the types of rods, the Blizzard Rod's massive area of effect makes it way better than all of them. Just saying. 
but when all these enemies are frozen, you can take advantage of this by stasising one of them and using an electric weapon on them to create a 40 damage AoE blast that affects everything nearby. This is most effective when used with a 5 shot Lino Bow that will create 5 separate electric orbs with every single attack, which can lead to thousands of damage done to everything cumulative throughout a single stasis cycle. Just make sure you're stasising the weakest enemy as you'll get the most time out of it. That tip is pretty hard to beat when it comes to fighting enemies, but if you want a more effective damage healing method while fighting just single enemies, you can always try Stealth Strike Chaining. Basically what this does is after stealthing an enemy to get an 8x damage strike, you can do a full 180 around them, and since they always immediately face the way they got stricken from while standing up, you can get another strike in them, and you can keep repeating this till their death, so it's super overpowered. This can be a very effective combat tactic to use especially in a challenge like Trial of the Sword considering how limited weapons are there, but if you're still trying to pull off this challenge, especially for those playing in master mode, there is one huge piece of advice I can give. Although you can't bring in any weapons, food, or armor, status effects will still carry in, so if you cook yourself a 30 minute attack or defense boost and eat it right before you start the trial, you'll have a really nice helping hand going into the beginnings of each challenge. These dishes can be made by combining a dragon horn with the respective food types, but if you want to find out more about this cooking system and all the meals you can make, I'll include a link to my detailed cooking stats video for those of you itching for more knowledge. In fact, I have detailed stats videos going over many of Breath of the Wild's important systems like this, combat, and so on in my Stats of the Wild playlist, so feel free to check it out in the description after this if you are new. Straying away from combat tips though, if you ever want the best methods at traveling the vast world of Hyrule, you may need to find yourself a good mount. And the horses that spawn at Upland Linder spawn with the highest stats in the game. Catching them may be a pain if you're doing it conventionally, but if you shoot them with an ice or electric arrow, a horse will easily be frozen long enough for you to board it as soon as it unfreezes without any other hassle. Another good travel tip involves really close climbs up mountains, where you just barely have enough stamina to make it to the top. One major mistake I see people making is using the final quarter of the wheel or so to hop up there and not have enough, or even when people don't decide to hop and suffer a similar fate. Instead, if you save your hop until only the last tiny sliver of stamina is present, not only will you be able to get a jump, it'll actually be twice the size of a normal jump since the meter is red, which usually can save you from most climbing disasters. Alternatively, if climbing just really isn't your thing due to an assumably bad climbing surface or just rain, you can create an easy updraft by putting four or more campfires together and lighting them. Or another way is by just shooting a spicy pepper with a fire arrow, which are really odd but unique ways to create updrafts in this game and take advantage of this system. But better yet, if you want an even more obscure way of creating an updraft, they can easily be created on any patch of tall grass when swung with a fire weapon and the quick inventory is swapped to something else mid-swing. It's a weird little exploit considering that it often takes quite a lot to create a heavy grass fire in this game normally, but ultimately it's quite an effective shortcut that you can take advantage of even in the rain, because for some reason it actually works. This quick weapon swapping thing can also be effective for elemental weapons, as they for some reason always lose your charge after a mere 4 hits, but if you swap to something else quickly then back after them, you'll get all your charges back, which feels like you can actually use these weapons as you should be able to. The second to last tip I have to share with you all today talks about the many hidden armor buffs that can be found in this game. The most interesting being how all helmet top pieces, including the circlets and midness helmets, give a 20% HR proficiency buff when worn, and how the island lobster shirt allows a player to travel much faster when using a quark leaf and a raft. But by far the most practical hidden buff is the stamina consumption rate buff on the royal guards gear, which by title is only supposed to reduce stamina usage on charge attacks, but for some reason this also works for swim and climb dashes, which almost makes it better than both the Zora and climbing armor combined, along with looking pretty awesome in my opinion. But last and definitely not least, the most interesting and useful place in the world for getting loot in this game, Satori Mountain. This place is always home to a wide variety of plants and consumables, including the game's biggest apple orchard with nearly 200 apples good for cooking, master cycle food, and more. But most notably, if you wait for the mountain to go in its green mode, there is a big tree on the southeastern end that will attract dozens of rare beetles upon it, which is by far the best and only consistent way to farm these critters out for all your elixir and upgrading needs. 
But with all of this said, that was 21 unique facts for all you Breath of the Wild players watching in 2021 and possibly beyond. So thank you all so much for checking them all out. I really hope all this information has helped you, and depending on the interest, I'll even make a part 2 to this going over another 21 facts. So definitely let me know. And if you're new, feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already for more Breath of the Wild content to come. Informative Zelda videos like this and challenge runs will be returning in full force this year, so I can't wait to start the new year off right. Also, a very special shout out to my amazing YouTube members who help support the content here. If you would like to help me out and gain exclusive channel perks such as badges, emojis, and more, a link to that will be in the description below. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you all soon. Goodbye!